Hey folks, in this video you are going to see how I debugged an issue with the 80Tiny85 simulator on Wokui. And I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use like uh, GDB and the built-in logic analyzer. So let's get started. It all started when this issue about the RGB LED landed in my inbox and that's uh, Franzinino which is an 80Tiny85 board and they say the code below is not working. There is this link so if we open it we can see an example and this example is actually of a configuration that does work. Now the RGB LED is a new part. I added it three or four days ago, so it's pretty new and it, it makes sense that there will be bugs. This example does work. You can see it's cycling between red, green and blue. But if we copy this example, this code from the issue, we can see the problem. It goes red, green, blue, and then it starts flickering like crazy. And when I first seen this, I had no idea what could be the cause. Initially, I started just commenting out parts to see. So if we just go with uh, red, green, and blue, we can see it works as expected. But this must be one of those others. And then I started uncommenting them one by one. And eventually I figured out that if we only leave this one out, it still works. You get all the colors and it cycles properly. So this must be the culprit. And if we go the other way around and just leave those two, blue and raspberry, we can see it goes blue and then it goes crazy. This is how I started to investigate it. And by the way, if you check out the issue, you can see my progress uh, figuring this out as I'm going to show you in this video. And I thought it might be related to the fact that delay and PWM use the same timer, so it might somehow mess up with delay. And then how I figured this out, I have this uh, neat trick in this simulator. There is this tiny debug library, which I can use to print debug prints to the simulator. So let's see, I can say uh, print len hello world, no, hello world. And if I do this, I will see this print here. So uh, what I did, I was just printing the word loop whenever I start this loop. And you can see if I just have like this, let's say blue, you can see it's printed roughly every one second because there is this delay here. But if I leave this uh, raspberry line, if I uncomment it, you can see that the first loop prints after about one second, but then it starts printing loops like crazy. And I also try to print the value of millis. And normally you would expect millis, that's the number of milliseconds, to go up by around 1000, as you can see here. But as soon as I uncomment the raspberry, things start to go crazy and you can see delay is basically not really working it's broken now and probably that's why it flickers so fast it just switches between uh, blue and raspberry and we see this disco light effect all right so i got this information i know that delay is probably uh, broken and the next thing I did, I was just uh, making sure this is nothing in this code because this code uses the 80 tiny core, which is also a new thing that I added like two days ago to the simulator. It's another implementation of the 80 tiny for uh, Arduino, implements all those pin mode. And I don't have a lot of experience with it. It might be broken. So what I did, I just F1 and downloaded the compiled hex file. It downloaded the hex file to my computer and then I ran a bunch of command line instructions to load this into a physical 80 tiny and I plugged in logic analyzer so I could see the signals and as you can see here the signals on the logic analyzer this is like the physical tiny there is a spacing of about one second between so this is this code and this is each of those this is the PWM signal and this is the other one, the blue without a PWM. So you can see it takes roughly one a second. And when you zoom in, you can actually see this. So this one, this, those short waves is like this area 
where it has this PWM signal and then it goes just up because we have the blue component goes from PWM to just up. And I think this one, this channel is like the red component or no, it's actually the green. It was pin number one. So you can see it goes from zero here to 255. So from uh, zero to 255, it all looks like it should. A and when you open the same, uh, so if we connect a logic analyzer, let's do it right now. So logic analyzer, one of, actually that is my favorite debugging tool here. So we'll, we'll connect it to channel zero and forgive my uh, ugly connections to channel one. And now if you run this uh, for a moment and stop the simulation, it will download a debug file. And if we open pulse view and import this file, we can see that we have a very similar pattern here. There is PWM and then straight blue. So blue is PWM and then goes up and then green is up and down similar to uh, what we had here. But if we check the lengths of those periods, if we mark this period, it's just 30 milliseconds and not one second as in the real logic analyzer output. And you can't really see it here, but you can see the seconds are going uh, up by one every time we switch between uh, PWM and non-PWM and here it's 30 milliseconds. So delays obviously not working the same way on the physical device and the simulator. And at this point, I knew this was a simulator bug and not some issue with the 80 tiny core. So how do I debug this kind of bug? And by the way, the reason I haven't fixed it yet is so I can record this video and show it to you. So the first thing I wanted to do is to see what happens inside delay. And for that, I'm going to use a GDB. And then if we go to the docs, there is a good uh, guide about uh, how to use GDB. It's pretty basic, but it shows you uh, like the keyboard shortcut and everything. And there is also this cheat sheet. You may want to check it out. Basically have the cheat sheet available. It shows all the important commands, especially for debugging Arduino and AVR. Yeah, let me show you how I do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just F1 and start web GDB session debug build and I'm actually going to open it side by side with this simulator so I can see them both and as I can see the program is now paused it hasn't really started it's like at the beginning let's make the font a bit larger and reload this page so the window is sized properly and the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to set up a breakpoint inside delay so no caps lock break delay we'll see what happens there breaking there i'm going to continue and we can see uh, we had a first sprint this is the millis it's zero and the program is stopped it's still like at the very beginning and the thing i'm going to do now this is if i uh, go to uh, the backtrace and look at main i can see or sorry look at loop I can see it's in line 21, so it's here. And I know that the first delay is working. If I look at the trace, I can see uh, this is the first delay, full blue, and not the PWM, and I can see it's about one second. So the first delay is okay, only then it gets somehow uh, corrupted after setting the color to raspberry. I'm going to continue to skip over the first delay, which I know is fine. And as you can see now, we got again into the breakpoint. But now the time has advanced to about one second in the simulation. We must be here. And if we go to frame one again to main, we can see we are in 23. And if we uh, step into delay, we can see the code inside delay. I'm going to switch to the text UI mode of GDB. That's a cool mode that lets me see the source code that I'm debugging. So layout source, that's the text UI. And as you can see, I'm inside void delay the first line. So this is the source code for delay. And if I next run to the next line, I can print the value of start. That's the number of microseconds since uh, the program has started running. Uh, it looks a bit low. I think, yeah, it's because we are converting it to a 16 bit integer. So uh, it cuts some of the information, but we can just print micros to see the full value that makes more second about 1 million microseconds. Anyway, you can see there is like this uh, loop that basically busy waits until uh, the time passes. It counts the milliseconds until 
uh, we get to zero and it does this sort of calculation. Now, what I was curious about uh, was to see how those values advance in the loop. So I wanted to print the values of all those variables whenever I get to this line that decrements the number of milliseconds. So it starts with 1000 because we call delay with 1000. And for that, I'm going to use a useful feature, one of my favorite in GDB, that's called a dprint, debug print. So this is how it goes, dprint, and then I tell it the uh, name of the file and the line number. So in this case, so this is the name of the file, wiring.c and the line number. So I want to stop in wiring.c at line, this line, 523. Whenever I get there, I want to print the values of those variables. So it's uh, printf style format string. If you are not familiar with that, just Google that. But basically it will replace any percent %d with the value that follows the comma after the string. And then I'm printing the values of uh, this ms variable and a start. So a start is starting in the, it's getting the number of micros initially, but then we, whenever we decrement the milliseconds, we increment start by 1000. So keeping them in sync. And then we also print the values of uh, micros and millis to see what is function return. You can see that we have this uh, while loop. It could have actually been an if condition. It's a strange way to write this, but basically what we are doing here, here we are, is we are checking if this is true, so if the difference between the micros and start is 1000 and more, then we decrement microseconds because one milliseconds has passed and uh, we add 1000 to start to restart this process. It, if you write here if instead of while, it will probably do the same. Not sure why they did it with uh, while. There is probably a reason. Anyway, since this is looking at a value of micros, it's super useful to know what micros looks like whenever we increment the number of milliseconds that we have to wait. We would expect those numbers to increment by 1000 because uh, that's what the condition does. I added this debug print and then let's TUI disable to remove the source code view so we get full screen debug output. And one annoying thing about this text layout is that uh, you lose the command uh, history. We don't see the previous commands. If we uh, go up with uh, the arrows, we can still see them, but we don't have this uh, nice log on the screen and then let's continue. So now we should be seeing all those debug prints that we added and we can continue. And as soon as we uh, continue, I already spotted this kind of discrepancy. Yeah, let's wait until it fills the screen and then it will ask us uh, if we want to stop and we stop. So yeah, so you can see that when it hit a breakpoint, the number of millis decreased by one, as we can expect, and start has increased by 1000. But something interesting is happening with uh, micros. You can see it went up. So 1001, that makes sense, 1002, and then 1004, 1004, 1005, and then it went back to 1003. So uh, there is something fishy going on here. Micros shouldn't go back. Time should go only forward. So here is, this is a bug. And then you can also see Millis doesn't exhibit this behavior. Millis does go forward in time and you can see like they get desynchronized here and then they get back in sync here. So there is something strange about micros. It doesn't always return the right value. Sometimes it returns a value in the future and then goes back. That's weird. You can see this here, exactly my conclusions from this debugging session I did just one hour ago. And then I went to look into micros to see what the implementation looks like. So we can use the list function of GDB to view the source code of uh, my, actually it seems to be a bit off for some reason. Let's try. Yeah, I guess it shows us, yeah, it does look like micros. I wonder why it seems a bit different than my previous debug session. I think if we go to layout source list micros, yeah, yeah, we can see this here. And then what I want you to notice here, it's pretty complex. And again, I'm not sure why we are getting a bit different version than what I got an hour ago. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe I was running against it different version of the 80 tiny core. 
I'm not sure. It should have been the same. Anyways, what I want you to notice here is that this is way more complex than the implementation I was looking at before. So I'm glad I had the other implementation and not this one. You can see here, there is this place where it tries to check if this TOV zero bit it set and TOV is a timer overflow. It happens whenever the uh, timer of the AVR overflow from 255 to zero, and then it increments this variable. And what I basically did, I added another debug print. So let's do it here. So that was 391. So dprint uh, wiring.c at 391 and just print overflow. And let's TY disable and let's continue. And if we continue running the code, we can see that micros is behaving normally going up, up. And then huh, funny Anderson who reported this issue is looking at it uh, as I record this video. Cool. Anderson is by the way, a very active member in the Wokwi community. And I really appreciate his work. He, he actually contributed like the graphics for this Franzin Hino board and make the connection with this great community in Brazil. So thank you Anderson. And what I wanted to notice is that micros is in sync with millis. But at some point, uh, exactly as soon as they stop being in sync, we are starting to see this overflow print. And if we run it uh, long enough, we can see that at some point these overflows are gone or maybe they will just flood us forever. But yeah, at some point they are gone. And when they are gone, it stopped being in sync and we had all of those overflows. And as soon as they are gone, we can see that they are in sync again. Let's go back to the source code view for once. So yeah, here you can see this is the breakpoint. So if it detects an overflow, it increments this variable and you can see this variable is eventually somewhere, yeah, Oh, wow, this is so much more complicated than the code I worked with. But eventually, if you check it, it's used in the return value of this micros function. There are like a lot of uh, different conditions for different CPU frequencies, but for all frequencies, you can see the return value is dependent on M. This value is used for the return value. You can see this is the version of micros that I was debugging. You can see it's actually easier to see here. It's a simplified version of the same thing. You can see if this bit is set TOV zero, then increment and then the return value depends on M. So I concluded that the simulator probably incorrectly sets the TOV zero bit in TIFR. And then I investigated and I figured out that this was indeed the case. So you can see this is an excerpt from the data sheet for the 80 tiny 85. There is this TIFR, that's the flag register that uh, it's reading from. Yeah, you can see here it's reading from this uh, register TIFR. And uh, you can see there is this TOV zero bit. It turns out that the simulator was setting TOV bit correctly. It's like the configuration of the timer in the simulator. And the TOV bit was configured correctly to be bit number one. But then there was another problem, this OCFA, which is used for the PWM when there is a counter match in the PWM, it was set to the same bit as TOV. So whenever we had a PWM counter match, we would actually trigger TOV instead of uh, triggering this bit. And that what caused all this drama in delay because it caused micros to return the wrong value. Long story short, if we change this to this value, so correct this definition in the simulator, I tested it locally. I can actually show this to you here if we open this project locally. Yeah. Open. These are all dumps from the GDB connecting. So yeah, if we open this uh, same project on this uh, local version where I develop work with, we can see that now after I did this change locally, I still haven't deployed it. So this is the same code, same diagram. And now if I run it, you can see it goes between blue and raspberry correctly. And the, those debug prints of millis make sense. Yeah, that was indeed the bug. Anyway, I hope that this was useful for you and you learned uh, something new about how to use GDB 
and this is a logic analyzer. This is basically how I debug the simulator and I show you my process here. Feel free to leave any comments with questions and we have a great Discord channel, walkwe.com slash Discord, so uh, you can join and uh, be part of the community. And thanks again, Anderson, for all the great things that you are doing and also for opening this issue and reporting this bug. Now I'm going to deploy this so it will actually be fixed. So until the next time, see you. Bye bye.